Welcome to another Navy chat with Justin. Hello. Today we'll talk about some interesting and recommended books for the war in the Pacific. As a foundation for this, we will take the recommended reading from the Cambridge history of the Second World War for the war in the Pacific. And since Justin is more of an expert in this area by far than me, he will add his notes and also provide some of his books that are not mentioned there or more specific on certain areas. It begins with the best single volume treatment of the Pacific War is um, from Ronald Spector, Eagle Against the Sun, from 1985. Yep, this is the, uh, the first book on the Pacific War actually I ever read. It still is the standard single volume history of the Pacific War. Now, of course, it is dated, unfortunately, in certain parts. But I mean, for somebody who maybe isn't particularly familiar with the, the general course of the Pacific War, this is a, a, it's a really great book. Just uh, to give a read, to give yourself at least a framework of uh, how the war played out. I was quite surprised when I read it because when I read Eagle Against the Sun, it was like, Oh my god, that's a cheesy title. This can't <laughs> be quality stuff. And it, it, it begins with that because I saw it before on Amazon and, read, and it was like, no no way, I'm going to buy this. <laughs> and, and now I, I ordered it. it yeah, when you're reading up on the Pacific War, you have to get used to rising sun puns because they never stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I highly recommend it. Just keep in mind that you know every single detail isn't... Um, isn't current, but as a nice introduction, you really can't get better than uh, Spectre's work. Do, do you know already his uh, follow-up work from 2007, um, In the Ruins of the Empire, The Japanese Surrender and the Battle for Post-War Asia? Uh, yeah, I own it. I have not read it, but it comes highly recommended by a lot of people I respect, so I'm actually looking forward to giving that one a read at some point. And it's about the same, if I remember right, it's about the same length as Eagle Against the Sun. So it's kind of like a nice handy little single volume uh, book you can read on the bus or whatever. For analysis on the strategic positions of both the Japanese and the US, it recommends the works from H.B. Wilmot, The Empires in the Balance, Japanese and Allied Pacific Strategies to April 1942, The Barrier and the Javelin, and the recent one a Gathering Darkness, The Coming of War to the Far East and the Pacific, 1921-1942. to P. Wilmot, is, that's great stuff. He's still well cited in all sorts of uh, histories. He's a very, very insightful guy. I've even I cited him in my thesis. Uh, I highly recommend his work for that kind of thing. So he's a very analytical approach. Yeah, it's kind of looking at the overall, you know, strategic. It's not like some kind of detailed campaign history or anything like that. It's just kind of explaining in in higher level terms the the strategy going on uh, on both sides, which can add a lot of clarity uh, to those parts of the war. Another author is Edward Dray with Japan's Imperial Army: Its Rise and Fall from 1853 to 1945 and In Service of the Emperor, Essays on the Imperial Japanese Army. I actually have a few copies of those essays and I used one, as far as I remember, in my Japanese fortification video. Yeah, Edward Dre is pretty much the man for um, uh, the Imperial Jap understanding the Imperial Japanese Army in the English language. Uh, I'm actually currently reading In the Service of the Emperor, his collection of uh, essays. It's very good. And I just finished reading Japan's Imperial Army, which is an excellent uh, institutional history of the Japanese army. You know, it isn't a detailed campaign history or anything like that, but it's um, a kind of a higher level uh, survey of, you know, the Japanese army's rise, uh, Imperial Japanese army's rise and fall. Uh, and it's superbly written. Uh, as far as academic histories are concerned, it's almost a page turner, I would say, and it's pretty, uh, pretty thin, so you can get through it really quick, and it adds a lot of uh, really handy information. Interesting. Does it cover training? Because I tried to make a video on the training of the Imperial Japanese Army, and I, I used this essay on the doctrine, but I, I found it wasn't sufficient for what I was going for. Would this be mm. covered in the other one? 
Uh, he does go into it. I don't know how much detail... Uh, like, it's not hyper-detailed, but um, there's also an essay in in the service of the Emperor called uh, Trained in the Hardest School. Yeah, but that, that is what I used, but it, it was... It was not what I was looking for. In, in terms of um, military intelligence and cryptographic operations, the Cambridge History recommends from John Prado's Combined Fleet Decoded, The Secret History of American Intelligence and Japanese Navy in World War II. Then Drea MacArthur's Ultra Code Breaking. And most recently, Elliot Carlson's Joe Rushford's War, The Odyssey of the Codebreaker, who outwitted Yamamoto at Midway. Uh, yeah, I've heard good things about all of those. I own one of them, the Joe Rushford's War, which I haven't even cracked yet. It looks very beautiful on my shelf. Prados, yeah, he's a smart guy. Uh, I've heard lots of good things about Combined Fleet Decoded as a, um, you know, a survey of intelligence over the war. MacArthur's Ultra, also another very good book. Now, for the for those people that are really into reading a lot of stuff, there is of course the official and excellent United States Army in World War II series with 55 volumes also known as the Green Books, which cover all army operations in detail and I think they are available for free as PDFs as far as I know. Uh, yeah, especially if they're available for free, I highly recommend reading those. Uh, you know, obviously... Um... Official histories are always a very, very useful tool. I actually haven't read the Army Greenbacks simply because, you know, my my focus has always been more Navy side, but I've, they always come with those, uh, with praise placed in front of them every time a historian mentions them, so I assume they are very good. So, uh, yeah, and especially if they're free, <laughs> have a look. <laughs> There's also one for the Army Air Forces with about seven volumes. And I personally read a little bit into the Strategic Bombing Survey, mm -hmm. which is quite excellent. And I got a lot of information out of it, a lot of interesting information. And I can recommend start with the summary book because it contains all the important information and all the stuff on coal and bauxite and all the different resources and why they are important and why for instance the bauxite in in Japan itself couldn't be properly used because it was of a minor quality and so they had to ship it in from somewhere else. It's quite interesting to take a look at this and I want to cover it in a video but I'm not sure if I'm able to do so because it's still a lot of figuring out if it's popular enough and nowadays since YouTube changed the algorithm quite heavily I have to sadly focus a little bit more on popular stuff and I'm not sure if resources in the Pacific War is such a catcher. Now for the US Navy there are two, one official and one semi-official. The official is from Admiral Ernest King, US Navy at War. The official reports of the Secretary of the Navy which is a nice summary of strategic and operation but the semi-official History from Samuel Albert Morrison, History of the United States Naval Operation in World War II, 15 volumes, volumes, remains essential to quote the Cambridge history here. Yep, uh, Samuel, uh, Samuel Morrison's work, uh, holy crap. I, I, I own most of it. The stuff pertaining to the Pacific, of course, uh, it's, it's a history of this whole Second World War, so there's also Atlantic stuff. It's all subdivided into very neat volumes. My favorite, and I think the favorite of a lot of uh, Pacific War naval historians, is his volume on the Guadalcanal campaign. It is absolutely superb. Uh, some of the best reading I've ever done, honestly. And now for the for the Australian side, I know I neglected Australia for way too long. I planned to do a video on something of your military history for like half a year. I copied stuff back in, in Hamburg. I didn't forget you guys. I'm really sorry. <laughs> So, and here they, they mentioned uh, Herman Chill, the Australia in the war, 1939 to 1945. And anything that uh, that talks about Australia's contribution to the war is uh, interesting. I actually know there is a free online, uh, one of the only volumes that are actually freely available and translated into English of the um, uh, Senshi Sosho, uh, the Japanese semi-official history. Uh, and that's on the New Guinea campaign, I believe. And now 
Although not the official history, the best recent source for major British naval operations is David Hobbs, the British Pacific Fleet, the Royal Navy's most powerful strike force from 2011. So that seems pretty good if you're interested in what the British did in the Pacific. Yeah, that sounds great. And for those who are interested on the Dutch side, the most recent source in English for pre-war Dutch naval policy is a monograph by Major Rien van der Berg. No, Major Rien or Major René van den Berg. Patterns of Innovation, a historical case study of military innovation in the Netherlands East Indies, Navy from 1900 to 1942. Unpublished master thesis. Army Command, General Staff College, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, 2013. So now for the interwar period, there's of course John T. Kuhn, Agents of Innovation. And then from Edward Miller, Bankrupting the Enemy, the U.S. Financial Siege of Japan before Pearl Harbor. And also for the U.S. Navy War Planning, War Planch Orange, the U.S. Strategy to Defeat Japan. Yeah, all great stuff. You can read up stuff on the um, naval treaties too. There's uh, two edited collections, one for each. Uh, the Washington Naval Conference, uh, long subtitle, you should be able to find it pretty easy on Amazon or whatever. Uh, and then uh, at the crossroads between peace and war, the London Naval Conference 1930. On the Japanese Navy side, which I'm assuming is probably listed in the Cambridge history, but I'll just ramble them off quickly. Uh, Kaigun, Strategy, Tactics, and Technology in the Imperial Japanese Navy. That's a must read for anyone that wants to understand the Japanese Navy. Uh, La Crux and Wells, uh, Japanese Cruisers of the Pacific War. Uh, another very important work. From Mahan to Pearl Harbor uh, by uh, Asada Sadao. Uh, that's another must read for the Japanese Navy. Yeah, and they're also mentioned all here in the Cambridge history. So mm -hmm. I think you wrote this, did you? <laughs> So this ends the first part of this Navy chat. I have to do two videos because the description is actually too long with all the books in it. So I have to split it in order not to leave out some books in the description.